Welcome back to another Homebrew Space Marine chapter conversion video. Another one of my viewers got in touch with me with a commission for a chapter master for their own homebrew chapter and I thought it would make for an interesting conversion guide. I'm Pete the Wargamer and in this video I'll be showing you how to build a chapter master of the Death Knell. Now interestingly this chapter master is in fact a chaplain, a master of sanctity to be precise. In fact the entire command staff of the Death Knell consists solely of members of the Reclusium rather than a mixture of the various representations of the Mechanicum, Apothecarian and the Librarius. This unusual organisational structure is just the start of the Death Knell's mysterious persona. As contact with any members of the chapter beyond these chaplains is strictly forbidden. Their secrecy is therefore further compounded. As a result of this, the basis of this conversion came from the Primus Chaplain found within Indomitus. Although I could have easily just have used a regular Primus Chaplain instead. With the kit chosen, I started things off by clipping away all the components required to build this particular miniature from its sprue before cleaning them up with a knife. The first task was to modify the Crozius Arcanum that is carried by the Chaplain. My intention here was to not only create something different from the base model, but also to create something that was a little more ostentatious in order to depict his higher stature. The source of this modification came from the Chaplain's power pack. At the top was attached one half of the Iron Halo, which I went about removing using my clippers. As I clipped this component away, I tried to retain as much of the skull half as possible. With this done, I could then glue this removed skull half to the rest of the iron halo, which came as a separate piece already. I gave this glue a little time to properly bond the two halves together before I brought in my knife. I used this to then trim the underside of the skull, flattening out the surface to make it possible to attach to the handle. With the new Crozius top built and prepped, I just needed to take, make space for it on the existing Crozius being carried by the chaplain. With my clippers, I made a cut just above the band at the top of the handle. Generally speaking, if you know that you don't need both halves of the cut, then it's good to make the cut a little higher than you need it. This excess can easily be trimmed flat after the cut has been made, but if you misjudge and accidentally remove more than you were intending, this is a much harder task to resolve. Once I completed the cut, I cleaned things up and ensured that the top of the handle was as flat as possible. At this stage, I had two halves of Crozius, which needed fixing together. With such a small contact point, the join needed to be made stronger than the bond that plastic glue alone would allow for, especially with the lofted position of this weapon making it more susceptible to knocks and damage. I overcame this problem with the familiar trick of pinning. This technique involved drilling at 1mm holes a few millimeters into both the top of the handle and the bottom of the skull using my pin vise. With the holes drilled, I could then take some wire. I used one millimeter thick steel florist wire and then glued this into the handle using some super glue. After giving it a few seconds to set, I then clipped this wire to length using some clippers, leaving just a couple of millimeters protruding from the end. The new Crozier's head was then super glued onto this rod and the result was a much stronger and more resilient bond. Now with this conversion, while I was planning on some chapter specific details, many of the conversions that I would be applying could easily be employed on your own Masters of Sanctity, with this simple modification being one of them. Simply having a more ornate symbol of office will provide both some recognition as well as some degree of variation. With the modification to the weapon completed, I could start to think about assembling the rest of the model. This particular miniature has a rather strange structure, with the head being attached to the lower legs and the two torso halves being separate. However, as I wasn't planning on using the stock head, I used my clippers to cut away this pole just above the waist before continuing to assemble the legs, torso and arms together. After borrowing the iron halo from the top of the power pack, I was now left with a rather empty looking spot at the top of it. While I could have fairly easily fashioned a new iron halo out of some other bits, I ultimately chose to add something a little different. But before I could do anything, I needed to flatten out the top of the pack first. I used a combination of my clippers and my knife to remove the protruding lumps of plastic before trimming them flat. With this, I was aiming to create a flat surface that I could glue some candles to. Now I grabbed myself some resin candles. These particular ones are from Green Stuff World, but there are a few different styles of these sorts of things. Then with my clippers, I carefully removed a couple of sets from the resin block that they came attached to. 
I smooth out the bottoms of these with a combination with my knife and file before using some super glue to fix them to the pack. Now, while having some wax candles hanging around in your armor is not exactly high tech and probably isn't super practical as a light source, it's just the sort of thing for representing that grim dark ecclesiastical vibe that the Space Marines chaplains have. It's also a really simple way of adding a little variation to your chaplain miniatures. With the main bulk of the body completed, I could start to work on the head. Incidentally, this was the first area that would feature a chapter specific conversion. The Death Knell all wear featureless reflective helmets. Not only does this compound on their mysterious nature, but their intention is to allow those that are being executed by the members of this chapter to see the very moment of their death in the mirrored faceplates. To reflect this, pun totally intended, I grabbed a regular Primus helmet to serve as the basis. However, in order to smooth out the face of the helmet and to create that smooth, featureless surface, I needed to grab some putty. I chose to use some perfect plastic putty, this comes pre-mixed, dries fast and it can be filed and sanded down later on. Using a sculpting tool, I then pressed a little of this putty over the entire faceplate of the Primus helmet ensuring that the recessed eyes and vents of the faceplate had been completely filled. With this done, I used a little water to help better smooth out the finish. At this stage, the helmet looked a little messy, but this would be resolved once the putty had been given ample chance to dry overnight. After the putty had hardened, I could begin the process of smoothing out the front of the helmet to become a featureless surface. I used my file for this task. The putty was gradually smoothed back until parts of the original plastic could be seen. I had a little trouble with getting the ridge above the eyes to not bulge out too much, but with a bit of perseverance, I was left with a smooth looking helmet. Once complete, I didn't attach the helmet just yet. I kept it separate to make painting it easier later on. With the helmet finished, I could begin working on another aspect of this homebrew chapter. The name Death Knell is a reference to the Battle of Lost Souls, the colossal battle on terror that rings to mark the death of the Imperium's greatest heroes. Preventing this bell from ringing is the driving purpose of the Death Knell chapter. It is their intent to destroy as many of the Imperium's enemies as possible to prevent the further loss of humanity's greatest heroes. In addition to this, members of the Death Knell also serve as guardians of the Bar of Lost Souls, a duty that is seen to be the highest honour for members of the chapter to be bestowed with. To represent this affinity with Campanology, I took a pair of bells from the Free Guild Flagellant set. As I only wanted a single bell, I carefully used a knife to separate the two from each other. Once removed, I made a few trims to tidy things up and return the bell to its smooth finish. I then compared this against the model to find an ideal location for which to reside and ultimately settled on the belt. However, I needed to make an additional trim to the metal clasp at the top of the rope in order for it to be properly glued into place. The final set of modifications for this chaplain also represented another of their practices. While the chapter fights to prevent the causes of the bell's tolling, they are dedicated to ensuring that the bell does toll for those who have been allowed to fall and that their names are not forgotten. While the identities of the members of the Death Knell are stripped from them upon becoming a Space Marine, in battle they recite the names of the fallen heroes, not only so that they will never be forgotten, but also to drive the Space Marine's determination to prevent the list from lengthening further. To incorporate this onto the model, I decided to add several scrolls and pennants. The first of these was a scroll taken from the flagellant set, which was simply glued to the belt. In addition to the scroll work, I also took some of the pennants from the Skaven Plague Monk kit. This works great for any time you want to add a little grim dark paperwork to your models. All I needed to do was to clip the raised part at the top of the pennant and to trim it back so the paper was much thinner. This made it far easier to attach a couple of these to the left shoulder pad. I positioned this so that the pennants splayed out behind the chaplain to represent them billowing in the wind. Once both of these had been attached, all I needed to do was to base and paint the model. Which left me with this. I approached the paint scheme in the same way as I would do any other chaplain, devoting the vast majority of the armor color to being black. However, as I didn't wish for the final model to look too pristine, I incorporated various browns and tans into the scheme. The mirrored surface of the helmet was represented by painting the vast majority of it with a bright silver and just using black to frame it. 
Once again, it was a great chance to have the opportunity to tackle another homebrew chapter, and I'm incredibly happy with the result. It was interesting to use a chaplain as the basis too, something that I've not yet done. Plus, if you were looking to build a Master of Sanctity for your chapter, then many of the techniques could be employed on your own chaplains too. So, the final thing to say is a massive thank you to all of my supporters. Whether you support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links, your help is what keeps this channel alive and it's what allows me to build these conversions for you. If you would like to help me out, then you can check out the description for all the relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye. Mm -hmm.